Welcome to Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret. Today we are in Genesis chapter 34, and we begin our study in verse 8. And this is our 33rd study in the book of Genesis. And Father, we ask that you would add your blessing to the word that we are about to read. In Jesus' name, amen. Hope you were with us in lesson number 32, because we're picking up right where we left off. Genesis 34, verse 8. It says, But Hamor spoke, spoke with them, saying, The soul of my son Shechem longs for your daughter. Please give her to him as a wife. Shechem longs. Shechem longs. Last time we saw Shechem wants, and I guess his his father is determined to get Shechem what he wants. No apology here, just Shechem longs. And somehow I do not believe that Jacob and his sons really care what Shechem longs for. Not after what he did to their sister, Dinah. Verse 9. <clears throat> and make marriages with us. Give your daughters to us, and take our daughters to yourselves. So you shall dwell with us, and the land shall be before you. Dwell and trade in it, and acquire possessions for yourselves in it. Not only is there no apology, or no mention of regret, now they are attempting to put a positive spin on what happened. Let's make the best of the situation. Let's intermarry. Let's grow wealthy together. 11. Then Shechem said to her father and her brothers, Let me find favor in your eyes, and whatever you say to me, I will give. I wonder if Jacob's, Jacob and his sons thought, oh, Wait a minute. I think there's something wrong with our hearing. Because we thought you... We thought we heard you ask us to show you favor. And no one in their right mind would say that after what you did to our sister. So there must be something wrong with our hearing, I would say. Boy, that, you know what? That boy Shechem, he had to be on his face, broken and begging for forgiveness, not asking for favor. Twelve. Ask me ever so much dowry and gift, and I will give it according to what you say to me. But give me the young woman as a wife. He is offering a cash settlement, is what he is doing, and the brothers are not interested. In fact, they are insulted. To them, he is treating their little sister like a prostitute, a woman who can be bought. 13. But the sons of Jacob answered Shechem and Hamor his father, and spoke deceitfully, because he, has, he had defiled Dinah, their sister. For some reason, Jacob is out of the picture, and the sons are dealing with Shechem and his dad. Huge mistake. Jacob's oldest son is about 20. These boys did not have the wisdom or spiritual sense to handle this situation. They are not looking to God for guidance. They are plotting evil. 14. And they said to them, We cannot do this thing to give our sister to one who is uncircumcised, for that would be a reproach to us. A reproach. Because God did not want the Israelites to marry pagans, that is, uncircumcised Canaanites. 15. But on this condition we will consent to you if you will become as we are, if every male of you is circumcised, circumcision, before I go any farther, I should mention it was the outward sign of a person's devotion to God. By itself it was nothing. Being circumcised would not make these Canaanites acceptable to God. But really the boys do not care about that anyway. They don't care about the immortal souls of these men. They care about revenge. 16. Then we will give our daughters to you, and we will take your daughters to us, and we will dwell with you, and 
we will become one people. This was an opportunity for Jacob's sons to be a spiritual witness to the Canaanites. They should have said, We cannot intermarry unless you dedicate yourself to the one true God and prove it by being circumcised. But Jacob was not there, and the boys were not in the spirit, so that did not happen. 17. But if you will not heed us and be circumcised, then we will take our daughter and be gone. Take it or leave it. And they are hoping that the men will take it, because then they will be able to carry out their revenge. 18. And their words pleased Hamor and Shechem, Hamor's son. It was okay as far as these two were concerned. Shechem liked it because he wanted Dinah. Hamor liked it because he wanted to make his son happy. 19. So the young man did not delay to do the thing because he delighted in Jacob's daughter. He was more honorable than all the household of his father. He did a terrible thing to Dinah. But he wanted to do the honorable thing and marry her. And it says he was more honorable than the rest of his household. That is a sad commentary on the rest of his household. But it is why the people in the city would probably listen to him. In verse 20, Hamor and Shechem, his son, came to the gate of their city and spoke with the men of their city, saying, So the city gate was really the city hall of the day. Shechem and his father go to city hall and present the proposal made by Jacob's sons to the men of the city. The question, are you willing to be circumcised? 21. These men are at peace with us. Therefore, let them dwell in the land and trade in it. For indeed, the land is large enough for them. Let us take their daughters to us as wives and let us give them our daughters. Shechem is a real poor judge of character. He says, Jacob and family are peace-loving and harmless. Let's be nice to them and intermarry with them and we'll all get rich together. That's the upside. Verse 22, Only on this condition will the men consent to dwell with us, to be one people. If every male among us is circumcised as they are circumcised. See, there's just one condition and it wasn't that we have to repent and start serving their God nothing like that but we must all be willing to have an operation and be circumcised 23 will not their livestock, their property and every animal of theirs be ours only let us consent to them and they will dwell with us he is trying to convince the men of the city that it would be a good business move 24 and all who went out of the gate of his city heeded Hamor and Shechem his son. Every male was circumcised. All who went out of the gate of his city. And that operation is a rough one on a man. Especially on day three, I guess. I have read that on day three a man is so sore that he certainly cannot fight, he cannot even run or walk or even move. And so these brothers of Dinah knew exactly what they were doing. Because notice verse 25. Now it came to pass on the third day, when they were in pain, that two of the sons of Jacob, Simeon and Levi, Dinah's brothers, each took his sword and came boldly upon the city and killed all the males. There was no justice in that city. Shechem was not punished for his crime and that led to vigilantism. When civil government does not punish criminals there will be those who will take matters into their own hands. And that is what you see here. And this had nothing to do with justice either. And it had nothing to do with God. It is just the venting of rage. 26. And they killed Hamer and Shechem his son with the edge of the sword and took Dinah from Shechem's house and went out. Hamar overlooked his son's crime. Hamar did not punish his son or even rebuke him for his crime so now he also died for his son's crime. 27. The sons of Jacob came upon the slain 
and plundered the city because their sister had been defiled Simeon and Levi the two sons of Jacob the two brothers of Dinah did the actual killing and then the other brothers when they heard what what their two brothers did they joined Simeon and Levi in the looting 28 and they took their sheep their oxen and their donkeys what was in the city and what was in the field the men of that city submitted to circumcision for two reasons they wanted to please their prince and they wanted wealth those are not good good enough reasons to go through the holy rite of circumcision in fact that is a sacrilege and divine providence repaid them for treating a holy thing in an unholy way that doesn't excuse the brothers but it is true 29 and all their wealth all their little ones and their wives they took captive and they plundered even all that was all that was in the houses well, at least they spared the women and the children little consolation I suppose since they slaughtered their husbands and their fathers verse 30 then Jacob said to Simeon and Levi you have troubled me by making me obnoxious among the inhabitants of the land among the Canaanites and the Perizzites and since I am few in number they will gather themselves together against me and kill me I shall be destroyed my household and I Jacob and his family had a divine purpose for being on earth and being in that land but now they will be looked upon as being bloodthirsty liars whose word cannot be trusted they will be thought of as people whose covenants and treaties are absolutely worthless and then there is the problem of all those who will be plotting to get revenge against them that seems to worry Jacob more than anything 31 but they said should he treat our sister like a harlot what are we to ignore what they did to our sister by implication they are saying father you did not seem to care enough to do anything at least we did something let's go to chapter 35 verse 1 then God said to Jacob arise go up to Bethel and dwell there and make an altar there to God who appeared to you when you fled from the face of Esau your brother God is reminding Jacob of a vow that he made 30 years earlier when he was in trouble Jacob said I will return to this place when you get me through this rough time and I will worship you here well it is time to keep that promise verse 2 and Jacob said to his household and to all who were with him put away the foreign gods that are among you purify yourselves and change your garments it is good that Jacob told everyone to get rid of their idols it is bad that it took them so long to tell them you know a father cannot make everyone in his home love Christ but he can lay down the law and say if it dishonors God it won't be tolerated in this house and Jacob should have done that a long time ago I would say better late than ever I guess verse 3 then let us arise and go up to Bethel and I will make an altar there to God who answered me in the day of my distress and has been with me in the way which I have gone in verse 2 Jacob said get rid of all your idols in other words repent of the bad then here in verse 3 he said it's time to go and worship God you cannot possibly worship God unless you first repent of all your sins verse 4 so they gave Jacob all the foreign gods which were in their hands and the earrings which were in their ears and Jacob hid them under the terebinth tree which was by Shechem earrings were actually used in connection with idol worship back in those days certain earrings were thought to be lucky charms that could protect the person from evil spells the message for us here is this not that you have to get rid of your earrings if you happen to wear earrings the message here is get rid of get rid of that junk that you're trusting in get rid of that junk that you're trusting in to give you good luck and trust in Almighty God and we'll pick up